I'm really so glad to be here. Um, the disreputable history of Frankie Landau Banks is about a girl who's a sophomore at an elite boarding school on the East Coast, and she has sort of blossomed over the summer uh, and finds herself at the start of her sophomore year attracting a very popular and interesting senior boy uh, named Matthew. And they begin to go out, and she realizes bit by bit that Matthew is a member of a secret society called the Loyal Order of the Basset Hounds. And this is kind of a goofy secret society uh, devoted to playing pranks and drinking beer on the golf course and things like that. But it is also, uh, you know, a bastion of male power because it does not admit girls. And it is, you know, these future leaders of America bonding and drinking beer together. And she is not even supposed to know it exists. Um, but she does not take no for an answer. And she infiltrates this secret society and gets them to uh, do these sort of large-scale pranks that uh, function as social protest in her high school and shake up the order of things. So this is the first major prank that she gets the Basset Hounds to uh, execute. When Alabaster students awoke on Halloween morning, they found that the portraits of headmasters, literary figures, and board members on the walls of the main building, the science building, and the arts complex had been adorned with colorful brassiers in various sizes. The founder himself wore a pink floral demi cup, while the previous headmaster wore an enormous navy blue support garment. No paintings were damaged in the process. Each bra was affixed with clear plastic wire that tied around the back of the frame. A small nymph statue near the pond wore a practical underwire in beige. Even the tree in front of the library supported a bright red double D from the sale bin at Victoria's Secret in town. The tag was still on, flapping gently in the October breeze. The Hazelton Library Dome, which stood so proudly at the center of the campus, had been outfitted in a large pale brown parachute, the kind designed for after school activities and Pee Wee gym class. In the center of the parachute, the dome's nub had been painted a rosy pink. And in case anyone missed the idea, from the front of the library hung a large painted sign reading, In the Ladies We Trust. The Ladies. On every campus notice board, there was posted a note, a replica of which was soon delivered to every mailbox, both student and faculty. Regarding the Halloween masquerade, even the dead among you will notice that our esteemed headmasters and board members, together with Mark Twain and the uninteresting scientists whose portraits hang in the sciences building, plus the tree in front of Hazelton, the nymph, even the dome itself, have finally, after years of watching the students' Halloween festivities with unabashed longing, dressed up for the holiday. No longer must they stare sadly from the confines of their frames and architectural moorings. Now they can celebrate with the rest of us. In the ladies we trust, happy Halloween. At the bottom of each page, each notice was stamped with the rubber stamp that replicated the ceiling wax design on the golf course party invitations, a droopy-eared basset hound. On Halloween morning, Frankie Landau Banks, though she hadn't slept all night, had been in her bed from 10 p.m. until shortly before breakfast. When the portrait of the second alabaster headmaster that hung in the lobby of the calf revealed himself in an electric yellow padded bra, Frankie evinced sleepy-eyed, innocent surprise she ate with Matthew and the other Bassets, all of whom looked pale and heavy-lidded, but among whom there was a distinct, though unspoken, atmosphere of triumph. Frankie wondered if any of them suspected her, half wanting them to know, half hoping they would never find out. Over the course of the morning, no one spoke of anything else. As she left history class, Frankie caught up with Trish, Star, and Claudia. Why bras? That's what I wonder, Claudia was saying. Oh, did you see the little pink demi cup on the founder? That one is seriously cute, said Star. I would totally wear that. I think it's like making fun of women, said Trish. Like saying, look how stupid those old guys look wearing clothes that women wear every single day. I think it's more like objectification, Claudia shook her head. Like making the library dome into a giant boob so everyone could gawk at it. All these guys were making boob jokes in math this morning. Same thing, said Trish. I don't think so. One is objectification and one is denigration, said Claudia, ever the poser. 
Don't they go hand in hand? I just think it's funny, Star was saying. Maybe it's like saying, boobs are great, because they are. I bet guys secretly wish they had them, like they made the library into a giant goddess boob. Don't you think that could be it? Couldn't it be pointing out how there are like no women in any of the paintings on campus, said Frankie? Couldn't it be saying, where are the women to fill out these bras? That's true too, said Star Wiggling. The nymph is the only girl. Did you know, Frankie went on, as casually as she could, that girls make up 52% of the student body here, but only about 20% of the upper administration? Oh, wow, now you're geeking out, said Star. Shut up, this from Trish. Well, like, who knows that kind of thing, said Star. It's so weird that she would know that. Frankie ignored the insult. People were talking about what she'd done. She was just happy to be on their minds, whatever their opinions. Ooh, she cried as if she just had a thought. What if we consider that maybe all these bra-wearing founders and headmasters are trying to get in touch with their feminine side? They're dressing in drag the way so many guys do on Halloween because it's their only chance to experience any of the power of femininity. Claudia raised her eyebrows. I don't think so. But the note said, in the ladies we trust, persisted Frankie. I still think it's making fun of us, said Trish. Yay for the power of femininity, said Star. The braziers remained up until after lunch when the maintenance team fished the usual morning, uh, finished the usual morning tasks and began to untie them. The library boob remained up for the most of the day until workers equipped for scaling the roof could be located and hired. Mail delivery at noon, containing a copy of the aforementioned note for every member of the Alabaster community, started everyone talking all over again. Matthew was positively buoyant. Frankie could tell, though he didn't say a word to her about the prank beyond feigning innocence and admiration. Frankie was glad he was happy, and she was angry that he wouldn't tell her why. Both. Thank you.